Rolling in on a massive set of 4.8 inch tires, the Himaway Cobra is a full suspension bike capable of handling some intense terrain. A powerful 750 watt nominal motor with 86 newton meters of torque ensures that these big wheels will spin no matter the conditions. So the Cobra is the less expensive version of the Cobra Pro. So does that decrease in price mean a loss in performance? It's time to take the Cobra out for a spin and see what this full suspension bike is capable of. Before we roll the intro, if you like this content, please come over and subscribe at the channel so we can keep on making you great e-bike related content. I'm Scott with BikeRide.com and I wanna thank you for watching. Now let's get this started and go ride some bikes. So what is the Himaway Cobra? The Cobra is a full suspension e-bike with a modern four bar rear linkage and rear air shock. The front end features a 95 millimeter coil suspension fork and the bike sits on huge 26 inch by 4.8 inch tires, a beefy overbuilt frame and other large features like those knobby tires means that this bike is heavy. At 88 pounds as it sits, even without features like racks or fenders added on. Despite this weight, the bike's powerful motor and modern geometry allow it to power itself effortlessly. The torque sensor makes the motor responsive and pleasant to use in challenging circumstances. And the added throttle control gained by this feature allows the bike to conquer much more technical trails and climbs than a cadence sensor bike would be able to. The Cobra seems capable and ready to power you deep into your local trail network. But what makes the bike less expensive than the Cobra Pro? Let's explore the pros and cons to learn more about the bike. Starting off with pro number one. This is a comfy full suspension ride. The Cobra is plush and comfortable to ride. And compared to its hardtail opponents, the bike is a dream. It easily sails over rough terrain and makes short work of trails that would be uncomfortable for other bikes. The suspension travel combined with those oversized tires and that rear four link suspension allows the bike to conquer some intense situations with ease. Overall, I was impressed with the Cobra's ability to ride pretty much any terrain, including some tight trails. If you're looking for a bike to explore deep into the wilderness comfortably, this bike has some appealing benefits. Now taking a look at pro number two, we have that torque sensor that we've mentioned. The torque sensor controlling the 750 watt rear hub motor changes the unit's performance and elevates its abilities. Often hub motors come with a certain jerkiness due to that cadence sensor. This is not the case with the Cobra, as the torque sensor allows smooth motor acceleration matched to your pedal input. The performance of the motor and sensor are enjoyable and confidence inspiring and applying the correct torque to push up and over slippery obstacles like rocks and roots effectively was essential for safely riding more technical terrain. This bike outperformed other bikes with a similar status that only featured a cadence sensor. And I would prefer a torque sensor any day for trail riding. And for our third pro, we have that huge battery capacity and extended range. The 48 volt 20 amp hour battery is large and in charge, offering incredible range when paired with the power saving torque sensor. The bike could pump out a massive range test without breaking a sweat, and it's a great companion for long range rides. Our range test was completed using a max pedal assist and throttle only. So if you dial back the assistance, you could see some truly legendary range on this bike. Stay tuned for the results of our range test coming up soon. And now taking a look at the cons. Our first con is that we have a few cheaper components and no fenders included with the unit. So the Cobra is an interesting mix of some higher end components like a 750 watt motor and torque sensor. But to keep the price reasonable, Himaway did need to make a few compromises it seems. Some items like the quick release skewer front axle and the Shimano TX50 shifter are budget items and a bit disappointing. For our second con, we have the fact that this is a heavy bike with large tires. 
coming in at nearly 90 pounds and riding on a huge set of 4.8 by 26 inch tires, the Cobra is not lightweight. And this added weight is not really noticeable when powered, but maneuvering the bike unpowered or in tight situations can be a serious challenge. Likewise, lifting the bike, whether upstairs or onto a rack is hard and small individuals would struggle to make any headway. The large tires are also a tight fit for all but the largest bike racks intended for fat tire bikes. So beware, the large capacity of the bike also restricts its use in urban situations and the ability to store and maneuver the bike indoors. So during our range test, the torque sensor displayed a few negative attributes. And the most frustrating was the amount of pedal input that was required to maintain that top speed of 20 miles per hour. The bike really needed a consistent, firm cadence and pressure to keep running at high speeds, and it seemed more willing to coast at 15 to 18 miles per hour than that max of 20. Using the throttle was a great way to unlock the full capacity of the motor, and I found myself hanging on the throttle even while I was pedaling just to get that extra assist. The Cobra was built for exploring off-road, and it certainly lives up to these expectations. The full suspension setup is comfortable and feels like a modern mountain bike in many respects. And this comfort really allows you to travel over some diverse terrain with confidence. The large motor and torque sensor combine into a responsive power source and allow you to apply the right amount of energy to make it up a slippery slope or a steep incline. I was impressed on many levels with the Cobra, not only in its performance both on and off road, but also its range and ability. The large capacity battery and energy efficient sensor combined for an extended range test at max assist levels, which was very impressive. So the Cobra is an excellent option for those who are looking to explore off road and ride in comfort. So what are some reasons to look elsewhere? The Cobra is a large bike coming in at 88 pounds. This weight combined with the oversized 4.8 inch tires can be challenging to maneuver unpowered or to lift. The tires also require a specific bike rack to accommodate the tire width and total weight of the unit. The bike also features budget items like the skewer style quick release front axle, TX50 shifter and seven speed freewheel. So it would be great to see some upgraded items here that would bring some additional value. But considering this is a full suspension torque sensor bike already, that might be too much to ask for. The Cobra Pro does come with upgraded front suspension and upgraded drivetrain, a more powerful mid drive motor and better brakes. So this is a considerable upgrade between the two, but the Pro also comes at nearly double the cost. So definitely something to think about when we have a lot of capability here in the Cobra. Now getting started with the frame and geometry. The Cobra certainly looks the part with a four bar rear linkage and modern geometry similar to high end mountain bikes. The performance is improved dramatically over hardtail e-bikes because of this linkage and rear air suspension. Up front, we have 95 millimeter of front suspension with a coil spring front fork. The fork features adjustable preload and lockout. And we also have a rear suspension, which is more plush air suspension. The rear has no lockout, but it can be adjusted via the air pressure. The bike only comes in a single size, which can be a challenge for smaller riders, with the bike not recommended for those shorter than five foot five inches. I felt comfortable on the bike at six feet. We have a seat tube of 17 inches, a total reach measurement of 21 inches, stack measurement of 25 inches, a stand over height of 33 inches with a virtual top tube length of 24.5 inches. Our minimum saddle height is 30.3 inches and our max saddle height is 37 inches. We have a wheelbase here of 51.1 inches and a recommended rider height range of five foot five to six feet, five inches. Next, looking at the motor. The 750 watt motor powering the unit is well known to our channel. The 750 watt Buffong motor can put out a peak output of a thousand watts 
and 86 newton meters of torque. The motor is both powerful and capable of good acceleration. Combined with the responsive torque sensor Himaway has paired it with on this build, we see good motor control and performance. This is especially helpful in slippery or technical sections of trail where you need good control to ensure that you don't lose traction and crash. The torque sensor does not lend itself to high top speeds, and I found it pretty hard to apply enough force to reach the top assisted speeds still. On slopes, the bike has more than enough torque to ensure that you're not working too hard, even when things get steep. So the bike was quick to accelerate with a 0 to 20 mile per hour time of just 8 seconds, and it easily conquered all of our hill tests, including our steepest hill, which is about the steepest that you could find. Next, taking a look at the cockpit and control. Traditional mountain bike bars with a slight 20 millimeter riser feature the standard items. Grips, brake levers, throttle, shifter, and bell. The layout is comfortable, if a little cramped, due to the large TX50 shifter sitting over the bars. The display is located in the center and mounted to the bars, and it's a 3.5 inch backlit LCD display, similar to other Himaway displays like the Zebra, and it has the standard information displayed, including the odometer, trip time and distance, and other information controlled by the function button. The display has advanced features which are unlocked with a pin code. The user interface is not the easiest to navigate, but they have sufficient info in the user manual and available online. The five button control pad is easy to use and features dedicated buttons for functions like the info button and light button. The unit also has a throttle, which is peppy and responsive and a major benefit of that rear hub motor. And next, the battery. A signature feature of the Himaway bikes is these high capacity batteries, which offer extended range and power. The Cobra is no exception with the 20 amp hour battery pack coming standard. This allows the bike to have a wonderful max range, even when operating at its maximum assist level. The bike allowed us to travel over 40 miles while enjoying the full assist from the motor, including lots of trail riding and hills. Using a lower assist level would increase that range, and I can easily see it making the 85 plus mile range that the brand claims in the right conditions which is pretty impressive. So in that range test, we got a total distance of 41.75 miles in a time of three hours, six minutes for an elevation change of 1,555 feet. The battery removal and typical installation is pretty standard for these style of bikes with nicely integrated battery compartment located in the down tube. After unlocking the battery from the keyhole on the upper down tube, you need to turn this small knob above the battery to release it from the unit fully, similar to other Himaway bikes. After turning, the battery drops down with a little assistance, and installing it requires the key to be inserted and turned. Then you can slide the battery back in from the bottom first before you click it into the top and lock it with the key. The bike also has an external charging port, allowing you to charge the battery while it's on the bike. The charger is a three amp output, so a little bit of an upgrade over other two amp output models. This upgrade is not helping that much though, because the massive 20 amp hour battery will still take up to 10 hours to fully charge simply due to that extended size. Next, taking a look at the drivetrain. The drivetrain on the Cobra is a bit underwhelming, and it seems to be a cost savings to offset the upgraded motor and sensor. Still, despite being a budget item, the Shimano Altus derailleur with a 14 to 28 tooth rear freewheel offers enough gearing to move you through the zero to 20 mile per hour general range of the bike. I would not want to pedal this thing without power for very long though. Next, the brakes. And sporting some Tektro E350 hydraulic brakes, we're very familiar with the setup that we see on the Cobra. 
Similar to the drivetrain, it would be great to see an upgraded set of four piston brakes on the unit just to give it some more stable and powerful braking and better brake modulation. Because when we're out trail riding with a heavy bike, the added surface area that a four piston brake pad would bring would probably be helpful for controlling on longer descents. So, despite this, the two piston Tektro brakes are sufficient and they do perform well. In our braking test, we saw a great result, and this is probably also a result of the brakes as well as those large knobby tires combined with the heavy weight of the unit, which helps it to stop quickly with good traction. Next, taking a look at the wheels, tires, and fenders. And speaking of those tires, we have a large set of 26 by 4.8 inch CST roly poly tires, which offer good traction and surface area. And these massive tires can be aired down to find better traction in loose conditions or even snow. They can also be aired up for reduced roll resistance. And I find these wheels and tires feel like those on a dirt bike and they're able to roll over brush and obstacles and float in loose sand or dirt while offering great traction. So I'm pretty happy with the wheel choice that we have on the Cobra with such a big powerful bike. The bike does not feature any fenders though. And while this is typical for most mountain bikes to not have fenders from the factory, many e-bikes do have factory stock fenders. And the lack of fenders is good for off-road clearance and ability, and it also reduces weight. But the downside is that these wheels will throw a lot of debris. And riding at high speed on wet roads will result in you being pelted with water and small rocks. So if you plan to commute this bike, not that it would be a good commuter, or you plan on riding it on or off road in kind of adverse weather, you'll probably benefit from a set of fenders if you are willing to give up on that little bit of off-road performance. Finally, safety. The Cobra has a bright integrated front headlight for nighttime riding and visibility. It also offers a rear light mounted on the seat post and powered by its own batteries. This is switched on and off with a small button on the light and it's not integrated. The bike also has the standard reflectors on its wheels and pedals. Next, looking at the contact points and starting with the grips. We have a nice set of rubber lock-on grips with some ergonomic flares. While I would prefer a round profile to the flared ones we see, this is very much user preference and the ergonomic flares do make an excellent resting point for your weight, so they're very comfortable. The lock-on grip is stable and grippy. Plus, it's waterproof, so it's great to see no leather grips on this bike. The seat is a comfortable Cell Royale saddle, larger and offering more padding than your standard mountain bike seat. It is a comfortable platform and it doesn't seem to get in the way of your pedal strokes or cause any discomfort while riding, so it's a perfectly functional seat. And next we have our standard Welgo platform pedal on the Cobra and it's a fine platform to get you out on the trails immediately. The pedals have some nice small pegs that offer good traction on most shoe styles and also have reflectors inside for driver awareness. They're large enough to fit most people's feet just fine. And taking a look at the accessories, Himaway has an assortment of accessories that are available to increase the unit's abilities. It has several different attachment points available for different items like a front or rear rack or bottle cages. And some of the most notable accessories that you can get are an upgraded front headlight, a front or rear fender, a rear rack or a rear cargo trailer. And you can also get an extra battery if you're planning on going for some truly extended trips with this guy. And there we have it, the Cobra e-bike from Himaway. Compared to the Cobra Pro, it's definitely a little bit different with the major differences being that rear hub motor and some differences in gearing and some other accessories. So we're also seeing a huge difference in price, but is it really affecting performance? Well, that torque sensor is definitely helping us out a lot and it really elevates the performance of this Cobra unit. So I found that rear motor to be very peppy and fun to ride, and it had more than enough power for any situation. 
Combined with those tires and the full suspension setup, we were able to travel over some really diverse terrain and do some pretty fun trails with this bike. So if you're looking for a bike to take you out on your local trail network or out on the logging roads or hunting, this would be a great bike to take you deep into the backcountry in full suspension comfort with tons of power to tow a small trailer or just rip around at high speed. So this is a fun bike and a great one to take out on your next backwoods trip. Is this bike for you? Check out the detailed specs at bikeride.com and see user and expert reviews. You can also check out other great e-bikes and see them rated to find your perfect match. Do you have a question or something you wanna say? Let me know in the comments and we'll start getting you some answers. So if you liked this video, give us a like and subscribe so we can keep on bringing you the latest e-bike reviews and news. I'm Scott with bikeride.com. I wanna thank you for watching and I hope you enjoy the ride.